than probably everybody else. Myself, I don't want to rotate. Fine. They made a provision for a sidewalk artists, uh, so he doesn't have to rotate. He has a spot for the day. Yeah, right. street, uh, street uh, artists have a different. Uh, they get extended for the whole day. What is a street artist? What's a street performer? A street artist is someone that's drawing. That's the only street artist you have. Is someone who's drawing? Yeah. A street performer is a traditional. I bet you with a guitar. I twist things, with I things out of a balloon. He makes art out of balloons. Yeah. yeah. So that's oh, that's, that's a, a street artist. Or a street that's a performer. performer. That's a performer. Right? Oh. That's a performer. Because they're not already pre-made. Uh, Madonna, for example, on the street in one hour can't do it. Right? It takes so, a whole day. Here, so sorry, Kevin. Your out. point is either uh, you want a you want a permanent space. I made a carousel in the market one day, hanging from a from an overhead thing. Right. Is that a, is that an artist or is that a performer? Well, it depends. Is the carousel something that you're you're performing and people are giving? <laughs> so the rash the notion between these two it's things. Same just idea. So we, you're performing some kind of art. Well, no, you don't. The notion is that typically the busker things, anything that is is that itinerant that can move. As Paulo said, the reason for the the street artist is someone who's literally um, on the on the ground doing the chalk art or doing the pastel art on the ground, or if they were creating something. Well, the other the other concern I have, the practical one, is most of my customers during the day are children with their parents shopping in the market. They go by, they see where I am. They say, oh, we're going to come back later after we shop. We're going to blow them away. Oh, that's typically how it works. Right. If I'm not there when they go back home, I don't right. get So you'd like a fixed I location? I spent two or three hours down there doing hardly anything for a while, and then my business picks up. Okay. And just so you know, our goal is, and again, depending on the success of the program, would literally to be have a board that identifies where you are, sort of like that sheet now, that it could be coming up at 3 o'clock as Kevin the Amazing Balloon Guy, so that people would know at 10 o'clock that that's where you're going to be by location. So that's that's sort of what we're thinking. So you had your hand up. Yeah, um, <clears throat> one of the questions I have is about the no voice amplification policy. Uh, so there is a, the policy is you can amplify your guitar, but not your voice. The, uh, that's a long-standing policy in the market, and a number of these things come into the noise bylaw. It's just because the the issue, as soon as the voice is projected, uh, the music and stuff below it can all be erased, but it's how the voice projects across the street. And again, the historic nature of the market, the way noises bounce, um, it's just, it's really brutal. So instead of using all the decibels, and again, we're not going to be buying a decibel machine. we got problems with five-ton reefers and tour buses that make as much noise or more noise than a busker could. The the reality, and we've created the zones to say, when you're at the area outside of the bay, you shouldn't hear the busker that's next to EQ3 furniture, and vice versa. And when you're at Beaver Tales, you shouldn't hear the busker that's in the middle of the William Street Mall. Those are sort of things, and again, this is from 22 years of talking to people on the street, and they sort of deal with that. So that's the rationale. So anytime that folks have done the voice stuff, within minutes, they're over the limit. And then it's don't talk to me in the middle of the act. So it's just we're really clear with everybody, no voice sample. What's, what's the difference between guitar amplification and voice amplification? And since there's a set decibel rate, I mean, the, the, the set rest, uh, sorry, the decibel your voice is coming out at, if it's the same as the guitar, what's the difference? It's the whole notion that the folks who are performing, who are doing the bigger acts, who now have the portable mics and the mic kits and, and everything else, they're projecting for half the market space. So the whole notion is it's just beyond the limit. So at one point in time it was no amps for anybody, and, and that wasn't fair because it was uh, affecting the instruments and what people could play. So it came down to voice amplification. So you're asking for voice amplification. There's so a, what else? There's an existing yeah. bylaw as well that protects buskers from that law. There's a lot bylaw in Ottawa. It says on a public highway you must not use voice amplification, da, 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 exception buskers. Correct. Right. So And it what does it say in the rest of that section, sir? Uh, it's just noise it's by public highway. Yeah. Buskers are exempt. Or yeah. street, street musicians are exempt. Street musicians are exempt as long as they're not likely to cause a disturbance. Yeah. And we have determined in 25 years of managing the market that bagpipes, and you remember that fiasco from about three or four years ago, uh, drums, percussion, and we're sorry to do that to percussion folks, but a lot of the bongos and stuff uh, and other forms of percussion are really difficult, and voice amplification are the three challenges. So staff, who are on the street, we can we can trigger that section of the bylaw because they are likely to disturb. And we have folks who, I mean, the other thing you have to realize that what makes the Byron market different is the people that live there. So when you talk about a lot of these other areas in the country, there are now the, the number of people who live in the Byron market is, uh, in just in the core, uh, is something about 10,000 people. 
in those towers and stuff. There are places that on the west side of Bi where they have special rooms that they do focus groups. And so if we got someone with a bongo drum next to the Lafayette, even when Lucky Ron's on, if they're doing something in the weekend at the Laugh, they got a problem in their space. So they're, you know, so those triggers are all things that have come up. We just didn't arbitrarily make that so up. The, but got your point. Right. Well, again, the main point is it's 30 decibels for your tires, 30 decibels That's for your right. voice. It's the same thing. If the law exists, and of course, so if you're saying, well, it quickly gets too loud, well, that's why we're paying you $200 a year, right, to enforce these things. No way. Not with the noise stuff, sir. Uh, the $200, as I said, doesn't even, so this is like asking for a hotel room that has an ensuite and a kitchen and everything else. So you don't, your room, the 200 bucks is just the basic, we're trying to do a rotation that makes sense, not getting into decibel counts and, you know, other services and And none of that would be possible without the 200 <clears throat> Not, I mean, well, the, the option without the 200 or the option without some of these is to say we either jury and come up with 10 or 12 acts that we know who's there and we don't have to have people coming and going as much as they come and go. Uh, that's one option. We ruled like that, that out because we didn't think I that was like fair. That. Um, but that's how other places do it. That's how the majority of places that we did research on two years ago manage it because they can't deal with people showing up deals. So that's an option. The other option is, I mean, if you want Cadillac service, and Cadillac stuff, we can look at that. Well, but what I'm, I'm interested in, and that's where we need to go, but for, so I'm, I want your points because we need to articulate that. So you'd like to have voice amplification. No, Did, it, but I'm asking you, you're, you're saying that it's $200 and the market is cost recoverable and it's been so difficult to manage it, so therefore we have to charge $200. Well, if there's a bus here, if there's decibel, uh, decibel in place, then why isn't it being managed? How are you just saying, well, arbitrarily, well, it's going to quick and get too loud and that's that. You just said that you need the two hundred dollars to manage it. So, okay. so okay. let's so let's I not. Can, I can perhaps answer that question. For us to send a vital officer down to go to the cleanest location and take the noise meter <clears throat> reading would cost about two hundred dollars. One so visit. So one complaint about the music being too loud would cost two hundred dollars for the city to go and enforce that. But it says that, right? Well, yeah, so, needs his so rate, what, wages lowered. So this is over and above what is already a service that's already there. So if you, if if there's a willingness amongst the vendors to increase your licensing fees to three, four times what is currently on the table, maybe we can start doing new noise meter readings. But right now, we can't. But, but if you can agree on increasing, it couldn't we agree on increasing? The no, no, we do, we do noise meter readings when we get complaints about things, but